At Google I.O. 2017, we opened the door to Room, a persistence library that provides an abstraction layer over SQLite. Now, Room has reached version 2.0 and is part of Jetpack. We fixed the bugs you reported and added some of the features you asked for. Let's go over Room's main components and see what queries are supported, how to implement migrations, and how to test your work with a database. Let's say that you want to have a table of users, and you want every row of that table to be an instance of the user class. Annotate your class with that entity. Define the table name if you don't want to use the name of the class as table name. Set the mandatory primary key and the optional column info, but only if you want to change the name of the column. Otherwise, the field name is used. And that's it. Room will take care of the creation of the user table for you. So that's how the entity is done. But we need a way to access the data in the database. We do that with data access objects, DAOs for short. More precisely, create an interface, annotate it with at DAO. In this interface, declare all the methods needed to work with the database, annotating them with the corresponding SQL query. Room takes care of implementing these methods for you. The supported queries are insert, update, delete, query, and raw query. All of them, except raw query, are checked at compile time, which means that if you write an invalid query, you'll find this out immediately. The class that puts together the entities and the DAOs is the Room database. Create an abstract class that extends the Room database. Annotate it, declare the entities and the corresponding DAOs. Let's take a closer look at the queries. The return type of query and raw query can be the entire entity, but also a subset of its fields. If you're working with Guava or with optional from the Java Util package, you can also use them as return types. So this means that if there are no values to satisfy your query, then your query will return optional.empty or optional.absent, depending on which optional you're working with. All of these queries are synchronous, meaning that they will be run on the same thread you are triggering them from. Room ensures you follow best practices by throwing an error if you run queries on the main thread. So use your preferred method of handling threads in Android and make sure you're off the main thread. Room also supports asynchronous query when working with live data or RxJava. What's more, the queries that return live data or flowable are observable queries meaning that you will get notified every time the data in the table or tables updates. Whenever you alter your database schema, either because you've added or renamed a column or a table, you need to tell the database how to handle that change. In order to do that in your database class, you'll need to first, update your database version. Second, implement a migration class, which defines how to handle the migration from the old schema to the new one. And then thirdly, add that migration class as a parameter to the database filter. After triggering the migrations, Room validates the schema for you to ensure that the migration was done correctly. If you don't want to handle migrations and you don't need to preserve your database data, call fallback to destructive migrations when building the database. To destructively recreate the database only from a specific version on, call fallback to destructive migration from and provide the number for that version. So we have our entities, DAOs, database, and migrations. How do we test them? To test the DAOs, you'll need to implement an Android J unit test that creates an in-memory database. The in-memory database holds the data only for as long as the process is alive, meaning that after every test, the database is destroyed. To test asynchronous queries, use an instant task executor rule to execute each task synchronously. In your app's implementation, you'll end up referencing the DAOs in other classes. To unit test those classes, just mock the DAO or implement a fake version. Here's another tip. To implement espresso tests covering code that uses asynchronous queries, extend the counting task executor rule to count the tasks as they start and finish. Finally, don't forget to test the migrations. Export the database schema first, and then use another handy test rule the Migration Test Helper. This class allows you to create the database in an older version and run and validate each migration. All you need to do is check that the data you inserted in the older version is also present after the migration. 
OK, so let's summarize this. Let's boilerplate code, compile time check queries, ease of implementing migrations, a high degree of testability, and checks for keeping the database work away from the main thread. All of these qualities of Room make it easier and more pleasant to work with databases, helping you deliver better apps. <laughs> <laughs>